Hey guys, this is Monster Ray, and I'm back playing Die Wolf 20's 1710 pack. This is episode 12, and today we are tackling our power problems. So, what are we going to want to do? Ooh, I don't want the rev speed. Oh, where did my stuff go? There you are. I want to make some things called boom transfer nodes. And you'll notice I made a lot more uh, ender crystals because my ender pearl farm is working splendid. And you can see it's running quite fast. So the reason I want these transfer nodes is because what you can use for transfer nodes is you can get the um, 8x generators, as you can see, which is super awesome. And it looks like going to the rest of these kind of breaks that interface. Oh well. So, like I said, I'm going to make the 8x, which is just a bunch of lava gems, which I found out I made a ton for some reason. And there we go. There's a zombie somewhere. Where's my sonar glasses? Aha, I found ya. That is great use for the sonic glasses, is if you can't find a baddie somewhere, just put him on and look for his little symbol. So it seems like it's tall enough in here for you to spawn and dark enough. Hmm. Well, that should be fixed. So, uh, now I got these 8x lava gens. Whew. That, oh, hey, geez. Come on. So this should be great power gen. And I don't want to have this, uh, this power, uh, energy cell here anymore, so I think I'm going to move it into a new room I built, which is right below. Oh, also, you'll notice that I have, like, Monster Ray and Monster Ray. The reason for that is Mojang recently made it so you could change your name, and it seems, I, I, I changed my name to the correct spelling of it, um, and I also capitalized the first letter. But it seems like it breaks morph. It also broke the way um, I had for Thumbcraft. I mean, I broke all the stuff for Thumbcraft. So like my research was gone. All I had to do was go into my save folder and change my um, the, the data files and something else, I forget. But if you need it, I will uh, make a whole video just for it, if you guys want. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, back to this. <laughs> so I shouldn't... Actually, I should have that there still. Um, I don't need this revivalist generator here no more. Or furnace generator. And... Yeah. I think that's it for up here. So what I want to do is go over here and you'll notice... There's this one little thing, this uh, block that's a little different than the rest. That's because it's actually an elevator. So welcome to my power room. I made. I haven't given it a ceiling yet. Uh, I just kind of threw it together. But uh, here's where I want to do all my power storage and generation. So if you look up here, uh, right above these blocks, um, you'll see my floor for my upper... Uh, area and also uh, let me change the blaze so I can fly. You notice I have my power line here too. So if I go right about here, there should be a power line. Sweet. And that's where I'm going to want to start. Let me grab a couple uh, energy conduits and put them here. I shall not. I don't know if I'm going to use that. Uh, and do conduit, 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 conduit. Yeah. I should probably put these in the wall. Yeah. So let's break them again. I think Blaze kind of messes up with uh, the way Minecraft uh, thinks I'm clicking on. So that kind of is a bummer. But anyways, there we go. So now I just go into here, reset everything, and set the back to an output. As you see, something is pulling a little bit of energy, which is just fine. 
I'm also going to want to place this uh, other cell here. Go to the back and click on this and I'm going to disable it. That is because I want to go in here and make the bottom an output. That way, um, looks like it's facing the wrong direction. There we go. That way, all the energy is pushed down to this uh, energy cell. And I guess I should make the back an output as well. Never mind what I said. Because this should actually be better because it'll send uh, multiple ticks of uh, energy out. Um, so now we just take our lava gens, our 8x lava gens, place them right here and here, and then have our ender tank set it to output mode, and nice pressurized conduit should suffice and here, and now both of them outputting, and both of them do 320 RF per tick out which is super nice. Uh, a lot of... and there's... there's mobs spawning. Uh, Why is this? Oh man, I'm about to fix that. Okay, what else? But uh, yeah, now we got 320 RF rather than only 40 when I had it up here. Sweet! And also my whole system is running off two hardened energy cells now which is a maximum of uh, it's 4 million RF. Cool. So you guys remember how I said I wanted to enchant my armor? Well, now I am with my auto enchanter. So, blam, ba blam. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. It automatically shoves it over here. Which I, means I can just do that. Just wait a little bit. So I got blast protection four, thorns one, that's okay. Another blast protection, aqua affinity, and breaking three. Unbreaking is pointless on these. Unbreaking three is also pointless on these. And lastly, got ooh, wow haste two. That means I can run really fast now. So here's without. This is walking. Here's with. This is still walking. And this is running, and this is flying. So I guess this isn't too fast, but it is just a little bit faster, which is always nice. So we, I'll probably actually throw the um, the pants and chest piece into my unenchanter because it's just not worth it having just blast protection and thorns and I'm breaking which is pointless on these yeah so you saw that like, that's that's really inadequate and like unreliable to enchant your armor so the reason I did this is just enchanting because I got all these nice books as you can see it looks like it there's a bunch of books with multiple things on them which is interesting like, wow, one, two, three, four, five. There's five enchants on that book. Five enchants on one book. So yeah, you just, that's where I wanted to just take some of these books out of here and put them on my armor that way. Um, that way they're enchanted with good stuff rather than just random things. And I don't have to worry about um, uh, the durability on these. Because remember the um, thing about mana armor is that its durability goes up for mana so there you go so I guess you could probably create a way to uh, make it so that this is odd uh, infinitely looped oh jeez but uh yeah that's what you could do so I've been collecting lots of resources in metals and in other minerals. Um, and I thought I'd start working on applied energistics. So to do that, we're going to need to make some things. One of which is an ME drive. But as you see here, we need engineering processors and ME glass cable. The engineering processors need an inscriber. 
and some of these other kinds of circuits and printed things. Uh, but to get an inscriber, we're also going to need um, some of these uh, flux crystals, which the way you do it is um, AE2 has this world crafting thing where you drop like for at least flux crystals you dropped a charge surges quartz nether quartz and redstone dust in a puddle and if you wait a little while they'll uh, transmorph into a um, a dust uh, flux crystal wow <laughs> But I forgot one thing I needed to make. I'm gonna need some cobble and a piece of redstone. And that should give me. Oops, one too many rob. Cobblestone. There we go. I need this because it's in an inventory. So I got this little room here. It's right off my power room. And I thought I'd put all my AE stuff in here. As you see, I got it kind of set up for. Um, what I want to have. And right over here is the setup you want to have for a um, a like puddle system your, uh, for trans uh, transmogrifating, I don't know, words. <laughs> uh, transmuting things into other stuff, like the flu crystals we need. So, oh, I forgot. I need to make uh, the thing that's gonna make this all happen. So, I need to make something from Steve's factory. And that is the item valve. Now, I'm not actually going to use Steve's factory for this. I'm going to use computer craft, if you couldn't tell. With all these, uh, computers in my inventory. So I need some hoppers. And some droppers and some cable. Is that what that was? Yes, which needs gold as well. Okay, so two of those. And then some glass. Four. Only need enough just to make this one item valve. Hoppers, a dropper, and lastly, an item valve. Bam. So, now that we have this item valve, a computer, and I put, already put the inventory down there. So what we want to do is uh, take an item valve I'm going to change blaze. Item valve, put it right here in the middle, in between where you want to have your water, and place it up so that the valve is actually faced up. And then put your computer uh, anywhere on the side of this. And you have, actually, you don't really have to, but uh, it's best if you just have it, the inventory on the other side. And this can be any inventory, mm, I remind you. So I have this uh, program called Grow Crystals, which does exactly what it's called. It grows crystals. So you have to note the direction you placed your computer, which is south for me. Uh, first you want to say the direction of the item valve, then the uh, direction the um, the computer was placed, and then the direction of the, um, dropper, or inventory, relative to the item valve. So now it's actually running, and what we can do is grab some water, with a handy little bucket, and put it on top, so that we can start doing this, uh, transmuting of materials. So I have plenty of these <coughs> excuse me materials. So I just place water and the materials in there. Wait a couple seconds and you notice 
magic's happening. And some stuff's missing. Ouch. <laughs> Did it pull out? Huh, interesting. I'll have to make a little change. So, what I'm doing is, if you look over here, there's these crystals over here. And, well, these seeds. So if I search up crystal, not crystal with a K. Crystal. There we go. You notice that all of these have the same, uh, uh, what's it called? Data, uh, item ID. So like 4134, 4134. They just all have different metadata. But I did not know that these two quartz. Wait. 4098. Interesting. So it shouldn't actually be picking up these. But it is. Weird. Let me fix that. Okay, so I should have been able to fix the code by now. So if we do grow crystals again. Oops. Uh, which direction is this facing? South. And there we go. There, that should work. So now if we go like that. Thing should happen. Turns into a bunch of those. And they should get... Oh yeah, this is... This is a weird error. I keep getting... It... If you just restart the program, it'll work. But for some reason... Like, if too many items get pushed in there at the same time... It kind of freaks out. So I wasn't able to fix that. For some reason. But yeah, so that should be able to work for, like, any of the other crystals. So if we get, uh... Some of those seeds. Oh, they were right there. These crystal seeds, which is just sand in the any of these ground up. Uh, let's get some, probably some flux, because it's much better to uh, grind them up, because you get twice as many. Uh, what's it called? It's, you get two times the output of what you put in. So, like, if I put eight the, these seeds. Not 18 crystals in, I will get a. whatever double that is out. <laughs> so, geez, eggs. Lots and lots of eggs. I need to make them eggs. I mean, make them chickens stop laying all those eggs. I'm making a mess. Almost done. Just one more. There we go. Now we just gotta add some uh, sand to these. But ba bam, got two times, so 36 fluke seeds. <laughs> now, if we get on here, we can throw them all in there and they'll start growing. Which will take forever because just the seeds. Ow! <laughs> that was kind of scary. I'm a blaze, so that's why. Uh, if I can pick them up. Thank you. See how they have 0% still? Uh, that's because, like I said, in just a puddle, they take forever. But we can make uh, some ex uh, growth accelerators, crystal growth accelerators, which are some glass cable, quartz glass, and a flux block, which is. Uh, Either four normal crystals or the pure, eight of the pure crystals. And the quartz class is just glass and quartz dust. S and these are quartz fiber, which is quartz dust and glass. And then a couple of any either normal crystals or, or normal fluix or the pure fluix. So I'm going to let these guys grow up. As you see, still zero percent. <laughs> but yeah, this this should have wait for them to grow, and then I'll put in there. Once I get enough 
for at least one growth. Um, I'll show you guys what we're going to do with it. Okay, so it was taking way too long. They're still at 0%. So I thought I'd just uh, create some more of those uh, normal fluid crystals. Because I have plenty of charged quartz and quartz and stuff. So what I'm going to need to make is an energy acceptor. What this does is it converts uh, RF or EU or MJ into um, AE energy. So we also want some of those accelerators. I can make one, but how how easily would it be to make more? How about I can make three of those? That's good. Am I good? <gasps> I can. I can make all of them. But I'm also going to need some of these glass fiber cables. Uh, four should suffice. And then what we're going to need to do, oops, is we're going to need to run some power over there. Luckily, there's power all over the place. So the easiest place, I guess I should just, hmm, I guess I should run it behind the wall back there. Gonna have to turn it into Ender Mini. Crunchy crunch. Okay, so where is the edge? There's my marker. There's, there's the edge, right here. Okay. So, let's clear all this out. You can see where I'm at. Play some torches, make sure nothing spawns. And then, power, power. We're all the way across here. And then, probably. I don't want to run it in the wall because that just means I got to make more con conduit facades. Why is there wisps? I hear wisps. Yeah, you. I hear you. And an enderman. So right about here. Oops, too far. Uh, right here. Yes, excellent. So what we want to do. Oh, there we go. 1%. <laughs> yeah, they take forever. So what we want to do, let's get a little bit taller, ah, not be in the wall, is place our, ah, uh, not like that. Uh, I'm a blaze, that's going to hurt. We want them placed, it doesn't want to place it sideways, why? Stop that. How about if I go like, Oops. Like this. Yes. You want them facing this direction. So that the uh, these kind of sides are on the on the ends and the um, grid shapes are towards the water. <coughs> this will be important for once I uh, get this is more put together. So we just gotta go like this. There's the last one. Oops. And now we should place our energy acceptor right here. And then a couple quartz fiber cables there and there. That way all of these are connected. And if we get back in here, turn to bats, because that can fly. We can do a little bit of power up here. And boom, boom, bang, shablam, power. So now if we head back down somehow, we're able to see that, yeah, we're getting a little bit of sparkies. So now if we throw these in here, wait like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Notice that my generators turn back on, because these take a lot of power. And then I pop in here, see it's up to 10% now. It's superiorly way faster. So that is awesome. So now that we got that all nice, we can actually just uh, let it wait and it'll catch all the crystals. Sweet. The next thing I want to use is this inscriber. These are for making, or for using these uh, the presses I went and found. 
And what they are for used is uh, making circuits, which are in turn made for used for uh, making processors, which are used for all kinds of different things. So it is essential. And we're going to want to grab a couple more of these fiber cables because I'm going to have to plug into that uh, power acceptor over here or this uh, fiber cable. So I want to place it oops, right here in between all these hoppers I got. So if we pop back here real slowly because Skystone is super hard. I think it's harder than Obsidian. But I don't know where it's at. So let's break that again and then find make a little hole here so I know where I can locate my inscriber. Then cables. Um, also, do not uh, break these with the pick the uh, the fiber cables with pickaxes. They will explode. Well, not explode, but uh, break. I kind of say explode because explosions are awesome. Not really. Sometimes, sometimes they really stink. <laughs> But now, this should have power. We can't tell because it doesn't actually show a power bar, but if we go and grab some of the presses, which I have stored in here, and some diamonds, or gold, or silicon, and maybe a little redstone, we can go down here, we can place the calculation, I don't want calculation actually, engineering press is fine. And then you throw diamond for engineering presses, you see it load up a little bit, and then it does not look like I can pull out the bottom. Hmm, I'm going to have to use ender conduits. So that we can actually pull out, because I'm guessing they have to pull out the side of it. So if we extract into a chest, I don't have any chests. Uh, okay, chest of runes, excellent. Now, if we go chest and then switch, should look inside and not see it, because this is not always active. Yes, there we go. So this right inventory interacts with the right side of the object, while the top, I think, is the press. I pull this out and put it in here. Yes, that's the press. If I put the gold in here, it goes into there. And I'm guessing either the back... Oh, interesting. Oh, because that's... Hmm. Yeah, there we go. So you gotta make sure you put the right presses and items uh, together, because otherwise it... Like, if you push in items using a hopper, it'll put it in there. But like, if I take this out and try and push uh, gold in here, it won't let me. But if I hopper it in, it will. So that is something to note. So I don't actually need that. I don't really need that. So it's just like that. And now we got uh, the engineering uh, circuits being printed up. So I can just throw some redstone, I mean not redstone, but uh, golden silicon in there. And it'll get all uh, pressed. Sweet. Sadly, I've run out of time for this episode, but we did get some things done, like making this uh, gr crystal growth accelerate uh, system with computer automation, and oh, I'm stuck again. It's so annoying when I get down there. And uh, we got some power, AE power running, and a inscriber semi-automated. You still have to go in and uh, switch out the presses, which is, which kind of stinks, but uh, to note, I did try 
for a couple days to try and get the inscriber to work. But I found out if you try and push and pull items in and out of this, it won't... I, I couldn't pull out this item, which kind of sucked. And then I couldn't actually put items into it without it getting stuck. It wouldn't actually process them if items were pushed into it, which is quite weird. But, uh, yeah. Also, I will note, like I said last time, these cost a lot of energy when they're running. So what I did is I added a switch, which is actually this little tiny ME toggle bus right here. And it's actually a multi-part, so it means that it's right in this one block space here, which is really nice, because that means I can turn these on and off, which makes how much power I use much more s much smaller. So next time, I'll be continuing playing with AE, now that I have some of these circuits all made up. And then we'll be able to be probably having some AE storage. Ooh. Anyways, if you liked it, go ahead and share with your friends and spread the word. And I'll see you guys next time. See you later.